What's up, everybody? It's me again, and it's time to lean in, bitch. What's up, Chad? What's going on? on? It's Monday. You said you was recovering from yesterday, child. We both recovered yes, from yesterday. <laughs> recovering from the yesterday, child. Well, good. Other than that, everything good? You ready for today's topic and this show that everybody talking about on BET? Yes, because Encore is giving us the Encore every episode. Yeah. I love it. It is, it is. It's very different for me, honestly. Uh, so, of course, we're here to talk about Encore, if you're watching. Um, it is Carlos King's show that is now on BET, where he has put mm -hmm. um, different, what is it, different former girl. female girl groups members into mm -hmm. a new super group uh, with a twist of, like, Nivea, who is not in, uh, was not in a former group, but, you know, still one of those artists that, you know, can work with, with a group. Nonetheless... New show. I was not going to talk about this show, but everybody was like, are you, are you watching this? Are you watching this? Are you watching this? So I, I finally watched it, and I'm hooked. Like, I like it. It's a really good show. Yes. Um, Carlos King is a great producer. What are your thoughts on Carlos King? I love Carlos King. Um, I mean, it's just, when I think of good reality TV, I think of Carlos King. And, I mean, with all his projects, he just, he tends to know the audience. I watched, I watched something the other day where, I think he said when he makes his show, he always has black Twitter in mind. And I feel like you can tell, like he has a very specific way of producing his shows and it always works. I love it. That's a, I, that's a, that's a very good point. Like, so, I mean, obviously he is most known for Real Housewives of Atlanta. He does mm -hmm. Hollywood Divas, right? Was Hollywood Divas? Mm -hmm. Hollywood Divas, R&B Divas, um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Yeah, look, look, I know that show. And then uh, Bell Collective. He's done a lot of shows. Bell Collective. Mm -hmm. This show. And so his shows, they always create buzz. I will say they're for the, they're for the culture. They're for us. Yes, and, absolutely. And um, like, just thinking about everything you mentioned, like they always create like hype. Not just on Twitter, but just different memes. I mean, we still we still using what's her name from R and B Divas, uh, iconic read. You know what I'm saying? What's Selena her name? Johnson. Selena Johnson. So like, yes. he's a great producer. I know if he'd be saying, "Get him back to Real House, Real Housewives of Atlanta." Honestly, I think I don't think he could save that show at this point. Now, if he had a stay, at this on, point, I don't think so either. Sure, but to come back, it's so much he would have to do to get it off the ground. And I love my Atlanta girls, but that's not gonna happen. But Today we're talking about Encore, as we said, and so we have the cast is Aubrey from Dandy Kane, <laughs> Keely from 3LW, <laughs> Shamari from Black, um, Pam from Total, Felicia and Fallon, the twins from Cherish, Lamisha from 702, Nivea, who was a solo artist, and what's out of 702? I can't think of her name. I can't think of her name. Irish. Irish. That's what I'm like. What's her name? I but, know all I, but I, know who she is. Go ahead. I have a, I have a quick correction. It's no longer it's no longer Pam. It's Pamela, cause okay, she's a whole well, different person, child. We're and we're gonna talk about her real good in episode <laughs> two. This recap is gonna be episode one, and we're gonna we're gonna come back and talk about episode two and three because two just got me all like really, girl. Um, but like Pamela, cast, really, right? Really, Pamela. Uh, but seeing the cast, like, do you feel like he chose a good cast for the show? Like based off of who he chose, is there anybody he could have? Do you feel like he could have left out, or anybody he could have added in? So, here's my thing. Upon seeing the cast, I was like, "Why such and such? Why this person? Why this person?" Yeah. After watching the cast, I said, "Okay, I get it." Like I feel like everybody is like a perfect mesh for yeah the show. Yeah. Okay. No, I agree. I don't think, I don't know. I mean, obviously there's a lot of female groups out there that he could have pulled mm -hmm. from. But, and, you know, I think this was a good mix. You know what I'm saying? Um, just because they all have different personalities. Nobody is really just a silent person except for like mm -hmm. one or two especially how things unfold so let's just talk about it so of course the most controversial are the twins of cherish they're very verbal <laughs> and i see people saying like they love them they hate them i like the twins i i think they're great for the t for tv um but i do feel like 
they should have probably been more conscious of their perception because you know what I'm saying like watching them on the show they I can see where people could be turned off but I think that they are the most talented and I think that they that what that I think with them they need to work on delivery with everything they say and do because that's yeah. what gets them messed up and so the first thing that happens with them is they all they get into it with uh, I think Lamisha and Irish. That I think the, yes. the older women, <laughs> right? So Who they make sure they know, that they knew was old, <laughs> right? They make sure you know they have that whole, you know them being the youngest and they you know I guess with them talking to them kind of a certain way people feel like they've been disrespectful. My thing is like, how did you feel about that? Because I have a, I feel like I understand like age and stuff like that, but at the same time you're on the same platform. We're all here. Like I don't feel like there should be a, a line of oh no, that's your elder. Like you know you know you get what I'm saying. So my thing is, I feel the same way about the twins that you do. I think that they are the most talented there. I think that they are definitely misunderstood in a sense. But yeah. like you said, I also can see how other people will be turned off by them. Like yeah. it's a lot that they it's a lot that they do, and it, you know it could come along with never being on reality TV because everybody else there. Well, no, Pam wasn't on reality TV. But everybody else, they're pretty much I've seen on some type of reality format in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that they, they, like you said, they need to work on the way that they're going to be perceived. But with that situation specifically, I felt like, like you said, we on a show. At the end of the day, I'm not going to, you know, censor what I believe or censor the way I come at you and talk to you just because you're older, you know, just because of this, that, and the third. Like, you know, I'm going to say what I want to say, say how I feel, and that's just that. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind. I don't think they were being disrespectful. They just were very verbal. And you know, later on, you start to see as the show goes on, you start to see how each individual person is and like what mm -hmm. their I don't want to say strategy is, but like the role that they really play. And that's right. what makes it a really great cast. Um, they go into the vocals, which I was like, um, they jump right into it. <laughs> and baby, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's all you can say like i was just like okay shamari okay good girl she sounds great the twins they sound good um from there you know pamela i'm like <laughs> okay pamela and then even arby like i know arby's not a vocalist you know she's been on a show like this before when she's literally developed as an artist so we know what her voice can do so i mean right. i didn't expect anything different um, Irish and 702, Irish and what's her name? Um, Lamisha. Lamisha. Irish, I'm just going to say, is to her and Killy are probably the weakest. I mean, would you, who would you, would you agree? Would you say somebody else is the weakest? Irish is the weakest, hands down. Yeah. And I, I would say, I would say Keely, but Keely has a, I like Keely's voice because I like that she has a very, interesting voice yeah kind of like britney spears like a lot of people will look at britney spears and be like she can't sing but she has a specific tone that yeah. when you hear her you know it's britney so i like Keely's voice for that but I that's how just... i feel about aubrey i feel like that about aubrey like she you okay know, you know her voice because i can always match you know find aubrey's voice on any then dandy kane song before now mm -hmm. you know so excuse me um but yeah, irish is the weakest i agree and then like it was just interesting. I mean, Killy, as we mentioned, she's singing, but apparently she's gonna be like the creative director, and like that's, that's like a big thing. <laughs> I want to know: Did she come on the show with the intention of being the creative director, or was that like was that said like you need to be, you need to do? Like I wanted because you know Carlos King is very, he is very particular. <laughs> he will screw some shit up. I mean, no shit. Look at having a Phaedra. I'm just saying. So he probably told that girl, "You go in here, you be, you go, you, go, you know what I'm saying, do this." Which, so, which is causing all the trouble because Nivea, who was a solo artist, not even never in the group, is is hanging close to this. Uh, are you are you creative director or are you gonna be singing? You know what I'm saying? Like she right. seems to be the one is just like, girl, what are you doing? And she's also why, why are you here? Favorite. She's also my favorite. Like I think she's hilarious. Me too. <laughs> I love Nivea. She's hilarious. I love um, her. How do you feel about her being, you know? going from solo artist to now being in this group? Cause yeah. Um, so my thing is, 
I think that it's good exposure for her. Like at the end of the day, Nivea has kids with the dream. She has kids with Lil Wayne. So from a financial perspective, it's kind of like I don't really need to do anything. Um, you know, and and this is not this is not to say that, you know, Nivea don't have her own money. I'm just saying that from a financial perspective, it's not something that she seems to have to want to do. But I think it's good exposure for her. I mean, Nivea was she wasn't like never a huge artist, but we know her songs. We like we bought to her songs. She has some cute songs. And I think that it's just, you know, good a good reintroduction for Nivea. And like you mentioned, she's your favorite. She's my favorite as well. I think that her personality is so warming and fun as to where this is like the perfect show to put her on with all these women that are so different from her because she really stands out, you know, as I feel like the younger generation will still gravitate towards her because she's so fun and bubbly. And she and she's full, she's she's full of logic, too. Yeah, she's meme worthy. She's full of logic. Like even like I was mentioning on my Facebook a week ago. She comes across as, you know, kind of like a functioning alcoholic in a way. <laughs> yes. But but at yes. the same time, even when she speaks regularly, she makes She's so much sense. sense. Like like you never hear her sounding like crazy. No, so I mean I, right. I fuck with Nivea. That's true. I that's, I want to see definitely like a fuck like she Yes, that's the perfect way to put it. I agree. Um and she like you said, you would think like People have never really looked. I don't think people ever really took maybe as seriously as like an artist. She had some bops. She did. Um, I still listen to them. And but seeing her in this light, this is probably the most I feel like we've seen seeing her. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm glad she's kind of like people, not just young generation, but like our age who know her songs. We we we're getting to know who Nivea is, other than being yeah. Tia's baby mama and Lil Wayne's baby mama. Because Facts. And, and, I didn't and, know much about her. Right, and so I'm glad that we're seeing that. Um, how you feel about Shamari? Because you know, Housewives of Atlanta to this. How you feel about her performance here thus far? I love, I love Shamari. I think that, I mean, same way I felt about her on Real Housewives. I felt that yeah. she was fun. I felt that she was, you know, very logical as well. Yeah. Um, I do find sometimes that. Well, no, I was gonna say maybe sometimes she kind of plays both sides, but I think that yeah, she genuinely is one. I think she's one of those people that genuinely want everyone to get along and, you know, that's kind of what I get from Shamari. But I will say that Real Housewives of Atlanta uh, training has helped her on this show because in the confessionals, she always looks great. She always is poised, poised very well. So it's like, okay, I I see, I see you Shamari. I'm, I'm, I'm here for Shamari. She's one of my, one of my favorites up there. Okay. Um, They go to dance practice. And they're dancing, and so of course, Keely was killing it. So the creative, the creative director, now she's killing it. Aubrey is a dancer; she can definitely dance. The twins were doing mm-hmm. okay. Everybody was doing okay except for the the, the older women. <laughs> Nivea the, actually, the, the aunties. Was, Nivea was like she could get it; she could just probably perfect it. But the aunties, Pamela, Irish, uh, Lamisha, and Lamisha, no man. It was it wasn't for them. <laughs> And I'm Sorry. curious to know, at that point, I was like, well, I didn't want to be a super group, but I'm like, are they going to make them dance? You know, I didn't really think that that was going to be a thing for them, considering who they brought in. And, I mean, if this was like making the band, then sure, you got fresh, you you you, you mold them up. But these women, ain't no way Lamisha and, uh, what's her name, Iris is about to be dancing like that. I'm sorry. No, not That's happening. Not happen. So, I don't expect it. Um, so, then they go into a big... Thing about one after the dancing about there being two groups and this causes mm-hmm. issues between who were once cool Killy and Aubrey. This is their first little issue. And um, do you feel like how do you feel about the two groups thing? Like, do you think it's like a, a kind of a slap in the face of the idea, or do you think it's a good idea based off what, what Aubrey and Felicia and uh, Fallon were saying? So here's my thing. I think that it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I think it makes complete perfect sense, especially given the number of girls they have. Um, it could easily be split down the middle. My only issue is, I think that I understood where Lamisha was coming from as far as it makes it seem like, or makes how it can make somebody else feel like we aren't good enough for this group, you know? And I mean, it's like, I understand, like that's just not, 
that's not cool to make people feel that way. But yeah. if here's the heroes, my things with the twins and them being logical, y'all cannot keep up with these girls. I mean, that's just the, the reality of it. And yeah, you can try, you can try, you can try. But like Fallon, I think it was Fallon that said, they know that they can't do this stuff no more. And it, it comes a time where you have to sit down if you don't, if you, you know, so I, I thought like the two groups are a good idea. Now, my issue is the fact of, I feel like Nivea could easily work for both groups. I agree. So that's another issue that I see that kind of could arise. But I, I love the idea of two groups. I just think that, you know, people got to get out their feelings. And I guess eventually we'll see where it goes. But the idea I thought was great. I want to I wanna dive more into this because the two group thing comes up again. You know what I'm saying? More through episode two. So I'll save it for that. But I just feel like with the, when it comes to the two group thing and it comes to Felicia and Irish, there are a lot of things that they they seem to be struggling with as it relates to mm-hmm. the current time and the direction of music and that I feel like coming on this show, they need to be open to or they need to get out the pot. And that, that's just what it is. Like, that's what I feel. Yep. Uh, but, of course, we're going to talk about it more. But, of course, this this kind of spirals, this kind of, you know, ignites the issue between Aubrey and Keely. And, and Aubrey's like, if Keely don't shut the fuck up, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> and I'm going to say, you know, I, I, Aubrey has always been spicy. But I will, I will say in this episode, and maybe like the first episode, she really was kind of mild. Like, I would have expected mm-hmm. her to be a lot more. She is, I put her and Kim Zozak on the same page because those are two white women that do not mind going at it with anybody. They have mouths. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Aubrey has always been that way from Diddy to now. So I was surprised to see her be so passive. And she really, I feel like she really was coming from a good place of let's try to. Let's Me too. This. I don't think it was anything malicious like what Keely was trying to say. Keely, at this point, nobody knows why she's here. <laughs> of course, right. this comes out again. So um, that was pretty much the end of episode one. We're going to get into a lot more in episode two. Um, is there anything you want to add before we close out? Let's no, I was just going to say that. Uh, I was going to say that. <laughs> I was going to say that I think that it was dope. Um, like Aubrey pointed out, I said this in front of everybody. So, because Keely tried, know. Keely tried to make it seem as though you know, yeah. she went behind people's back, and I was like, no, she really did say this in front of everybody, so it wouldn't be a thing to where it would seem like she's trying to, you know, be divisive. But that's it. No, I Keely is Keely is death. You know, when 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 what's what's it? Fallon, which one is it? What's one of them Cherry Twins went off on her in episode two? We're going to talk about it in the next one. I, I but think it was Fallon. Whichever one, she was spot on. When I tell you, I was just like. Yes, yeah, spot And on. so that's why I say, you know, impact versus intent and delivery with them may be a little off, but they be speaking the truth. Yeah, They're the youngest. And you it's, cannot and it's deny that. So, but we're going to talk about that the next one. Um, if you're watching, you know, join the next video. It's like right after this. You can click on it or whatever. Uh, we're going to talk about episode <laughs> two because we're going to talk about a lot of shit. Um, me and Chad will be here. If of course, like, subscribe, comment, all things lean. If you like this video, and uh, we're going to get out of here and we'll see you at episodes two. Recap. Let me go change my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see y'all back. All right. Change that shirt.